right, let's talk some more about these crystal structures um, and define some rules for how crystals are able to form. Now we can do this ourselves, it's pretty logical, um, but Pauling is the first one to have done it and written it down. Um, Linus, Linus Pauling came up with five crystal rules in 1929 for predicting uh, the crystal structures and ionic compounds, right? But even with a little background knowledge, we can hypothesize these same rules. And most of them are, are pretty um, logical, right? So when we start to think about a crystal lattice, a crystal structure, right? The atoms themselves are the individual building blocks, right? They're the Legos that go together to build that overall crystal structure. And how the Legos fit together, how each of those atoms fit together is dependent on their size, right? Now, typically when you create these bonds, you'll have a cation at the center and anions bonded around it, right? Um, the interstice is the space or opening between these anions, right? Now, cations that are really small compared to the anions around them, so there's a lot of empty space, they're not really touching each other, um, that's unstable. Now, as that cation gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that causes the space or opening between those ions, the interstice, to get smaller and smaller, and those become more stable, right? So we have to think about the distance between the cation and the anion. Right, how much space is there? And we can refer to that distance in two different ways. The first is the atomic radii. And this is just the radius uh, between two identical atoms, right? So the, the distance between each center divided by two. Okay. Now, as we know, a lot of bonds are between two identical atoms. Sometimes they're between two differently sized atoms. And we call uh, the radii here, ionic radii. So basically you do the same thing. You take the distance between the center of the two and divide it by two. Right? So that's a half link between the two centers of the different ions. So we have um, atomic radii, ionic radii, measuring the distance between those atoms that are bonded. Um, and now we have to take another step back and think about the overall structure, right? Not only how far apart are these atoms bonded, but what's the shape that they create? So remember there is typically a cation in the middle, surrounded by anions on the outside. And the shape that they make is called the coordination polyhedron, right? And the coordination number is how many closest neighbors surround that central ion, right? So in this example, there's one central red ion and one, two, three, four, five, six outer surrounding closest neighbors. So we would say it has a coordination number of six. Right. Here's some more examples. Uh, we call that octahedral, the coordination of six, tetrahedral, coordination number of four, SiO2, the silica tetrahedra is a really common example of this. Now let's revisit this figure, right? How do you think the size of the cation, that red positively charged ion in the middle, how do you think the size of that relates to the coordination number, right? In other words, as the size of the cation increases, should the coordination number, the number of anions, anions around it, generally increase or decrease? Well, it makes sense that if the cation gets bigger and bigger and bigger, more and more and more anions can fit around it closely, right? There's more space for that to happen. So that means that the radii of cations increase the coordination number. The larger a cation gets, the more anions can bond to it and be stable, right? And this allows for a lot of different um, coordination shapes, right? You can have linear, triangular, all the way up to cubic. And this brings us to rule one, right? I'm not gonna read the actual Pauling's rule, I'm just gonna summarize it. Basically it says that the radii of cations increase, as the radii of cations increase in size, um, so does the coordination number, right? The larger the cation is, the more anions can fit around it. So that's Pauling's rule number one. 